Hello and welcome to this special program. My name is Mwangala Santos. With me is Louisa Nalumpumbwe. Louisa, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Mwangala. How are you? Despite the circumstances, mm -hmm. I'm okay. And how are you? I'm very well as well, despite the same circumstances you've alluded to. I am well at the end of the day. We are, we are all trying you know, to, to, hang in to there. get used and hang in there, mm -hmm. but we are, we are getting better by the day. Sure. Now, Louisa, this is a program where we are remembering uh, Father Charles Chidinda, mm -hmm. the man who's been described by many in many, many different ways. Mm -hmm. But here at Loyola, we are simply describing him as a team builder and a man who had time for every team member. He was mm -hmm. available for all of us. I think you, you must recall that you know, he had time for all of us. Mm -hmm. And for the viewers at home, we are saying stay tuned as we continue talking to different people who have their own views and describing Father Chilinda in different ways. And by the way, we are also going to show you how Father Chilinda loved his pets. In this case, we're talking about dogs. Exactly, Mwangala. You know, um, that is actually one of the light... Um, the lightest moment we're going to have on this show because he really loved his dogs. And I remember he actually gave his dogs a name. He used to call them COVID. COVID, I remember. All the time he's going to peep through the window upstairs and he'd be like, COVID, hi. You know, that was actually really hilarious about him. <laughs> but anyway, for now, uh, let me just uh, briefly just tell you more about um, the Father Schlinder. Now, Father Schlinder was actually a Catholic Jesuit priest and uh, Loyola Productions founder. Father Chilinda died on Thursday on the 21st of January 2021 in Lusaka after testing positive to COVID-19. The renowned clergyman was based at Lusaka's St. Ignatius Parish Catholic Church where he took care of the welfare of his fellow priests. He was born on 29 October 1965 and entered the Society of Jesus on 19 May 1985. Father Chilinda, whose death shocked many, was ordained as a priest on 21st July 2001 and of course he took his final vows on 27 May 2006. We are now joined by Father Patrick Mulemi, who is the Executive Director for Loyola Television, to shed more light on Father Chilinda. Father Mulemi, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I know you've known Father Chilinda for more than 27 years. How would you describe him? How do you describe Father Chilinda, really? You know, um, at his funeral the other day, uh, Father Peter Buanali, who preached, said uh, when he was asked to preach, his response was, how can I talk about Father Chilinda in 10, 15 minutes? You need the whole day mm. to talk about the man. Um, that, that's the kind of person that he was. But just to summarize um, him, first, the bottom line is he was a good man, a wonderful man, a visionary. He is somebody who dreamt big, who saw things in a big way. Uh, he was somebody who had a big heart. Maybe that's the one I would use, actually, that uh, Father Chilinda had a big heart. He had space for everybody in his heart. He was a friend to people in high places and people in the lowest places of society and everybody else in between. That's Charles, a man with a big heart, a man whose heart was full of love, love for people that he served, love for people that he lived with, love for people that he worked with, love for this nation. He had been a Jesuit for so many years, 30 plus years as a Jesuit. But we didn't own him as Jesuits. Mm. His family didn't own him. He belonged to everybody. That's why the grief uh, when he died, has been felt by people from all walks of society because he belonged to the whole nation. He belonged to everybody. He didn't belong to just the Jesuits alone. He didn't belong to the Catholic Church alone. He didn't belong to the politicians alone. He belonged to everybody. That's, in a nutshell, that's, that's the man. Wow. Now, Father Chilinda mm -hmm. founded Loyola Productions, which later saw the birth of Loyola Television. 
How was the experience of joining him and working with him? How was that experience like for you? Well, I, I worked with Father Chilinda on and off uh, over a period of, what, 10, 10 years or so. Um, so the first time I came to join him at Loyola was in 2010. And he was an inspirational person, totally committed to seeing the development of Loyola. And it was not all about himself. Uh, it was about the ministry, the mission of the Society of Jesus. It was about doing this for the church. It was about doing this uh, for the nation. He saw a gap, if you like, he saw a gap in the media uh, work in the country and thought we can fill that gap. So my experience of working with him, uh, which was, you know, at the beginning I worked with him from 2010 to 2014 when I left to go and work in Rome. Uh, that was a great experience. I learned a lot from him. A lot of the things that I know about media, mm. I learned from him. Yes, I went to school. I studied media in school. I know, you know, but that's theory. The practical thing, the media itself, the purpose for why we do what we do, I learned a lot of that from him. So that's why, like, uh, when I was working in Rome as director of communications for the Jesuits uh, worldwide in Rome, when we had one big meeting where you have all the Jesuits, or not all the Jesuits, but representatives of Jesuits from all over the world coming to Rome, I invited him to come and help me with uh, the media work for that meeting, which was six weeks, and he did a fantastic, fantastic job. Um, I think as a benefit for that, uh, he ended up meeting the Pope mm. uh, and saying hello to the Pope, which was great. But he was that kind of person who, you know, was totally dedicated to his work and he knew the purpose for why he was doing media. It was not separate from his priesthood. And he would always say, I film with faith in my mind. So I see things that I film with the eye of faith. His faith as a priest, as a Catholic, as a Christian, led him to film what he filmed. And so that's why if you look at things, you know, projects that he worked on, he worked on projects about HIV AIDS. He worked on projects about poverty. He worked on projects about social justice. He worked on projects about development, whether it's in the health ministry or in, other. he did all kinds of things, but Faith was his driving faith, uh, force. And that's where Loyola, as Loyola Productions and eventually Loyola Television stems from. It stems from faith. And that's what he always wanted to inculcate in the people that he worked with in this establishment. Wow. Now, I, I recall that you, you, you used to call each other that you're the two crazy priests. Now I know one of them is gone, and he had a vision for Loyola Production and uh, Loyola Television. What is the way forward? Now that what the, the other crazy priest is no more, and we now have one more crazy priest. Well, there's still a crazy <laughs> priest there who believes in doing this uh, mm. crazy business, so mm. that's good. But, um, you see, as I said earlier, all this was not about himself. Uh, for Loyola to get to where it is today, he built a team around himself. So there was a team that carried the vision. Uh, that team is still here, buying into the vision that the man had. It's a small team, team of dedicated people, team of people who believed in developing this institution for the benefit of many other people. And I believe that, you know, these people that are here, the team that Father Chilinda has left, really buys into that mission and wants to see it going forward. And if in the future other people come to join us, they'll have to buy into that mission. Mm. And so, yeah, we have a bright future. There is, that's where the way forward is. It's a vision 
that other people have bought into, the team that he built bought into that vision and the mission of Loyola. And therefore, anybody else who comes will, build, will buy into that mission and the vision of Loyola. And yes, so we will go forward. Beautifully said, Father. Now, how would you like Father Chilinda to be remembered? On his ordination, when Father Chilinda was ordained a priest, you know, we priests usually print small souvenir cards. And we write all kinds of quotations that we want to put there. The quotation that he put on that, he said, um, the measure of love is to love without measure. He lived that way. He stuck to that throughout his life, or at least throughout his priestly life. From the time he was ordained, he would always go back to that line. The measure of love is to love without measure. Father Chilinda was somebody who really, really loved people. Father Chilinda was somebody who really loved his country. He loved this country. He loved the people of Zambia. And if you want to remember something about him, is that love. That's why I said he had a big heart full of love, love for all kinds of people who would come to him. Every, he had a space for everybody in his heart. Maybe the, the great thing, um, a blessing that he experienced in his last few months was he went on a tour of the whole country to film the waterfalls in all the provinces of this country just a few months ago. And he met different types of people, different tribes, different ethnicities, and he had friends among all these people. Why didn't he focus only on one part of the country, go and film there, but he wanted to film in the whole country? Because he had a big heart, heart full of love, love for the whole country, love for all the people in this country. That's what you have to remember about him, that he loved and loved to the fullest. Thank you for sharing your insight on Father Chilinda and Loyola Television. We are now going to play you one of Father Chilinda's favorite songs. <laughs> Thank 
Welcome back. We are now joined by Father John Mwelwa. He's right here in the studios with us to share with us issues around death. Many a times as Christians, we are all scared to die. And Father is here to share with us on how we should be prepared, or rather how we should look at death. Father Mwelwa, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mwangala, and thank you to our viewers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Father, we are in this pandemic where everybody is scared, especially when it comes to death. Yeah. Now, as a Christian, how prepared should we be for death? Yeah, most of the time we don't think about death. Mm. But during this time, uh, we are faced with so many challenges. And uh, death has become, you know, the order of the day. Uh, so many people are passing on, very close friends, relatives. Yes, it is a big challenge. But uh, one of the things that I, uh, whenever I'm looking at death, uh, one of the things I always look at is life itself. Because death is nothing but through our, our Christian uh, faith as a transition. If you live your life to the full, you don't have to be afraid of death. And I think uh, I always like the uh, uh, John, uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. So for me, the fullness of life is in fact what we are supposed to celebrate. Even death itself, when it comes, of course, we are at a loss and it's very... Um, uh, you know, when somebody close dies, you feel like a part of you, you know. They have been part and parcel of your life, and, you know, losing them is not easy. It's a big challenge. But at the same time, when we look at uh, life and the fullness of life, then you realize that, in fact, even as death comes, you are not afraid because you are in communion, you are in touch uh, with, uh, with God himself. I, I do like scripture. For me, it always strengthens me and it always gives me you know, hope and courage. Uh, one, of the <clears throat> one of the things, whenever I look at the scriptures, is uh, you know, I try to navigate and see how Jesus himself looked at, uh, at death. Yeah, if you, ultimately, when Jesus was, you know, when Jesus was in the, in the, in the, in the garden of Gethsemane, and he was praying, and he knew that his hour had in fact come, uh, he prayed to his father. Yes. First of all, was, 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 there was that kind of agony that he had to go through. You know, Father, do I have to pass through this? You know, it was not just death, but even the suffering that he was undergoing. And he says, you know, do I have to pass through this? And in the end, what did he say? Let your will be done. And for me, I look at that not as resignation, but just acceptance to say, ultimately, Father, let what you have prepared be done in my life. 
And not only that, uh, if you look at the Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark, um, when Jesus was dying on the cross, the, the prayer, the cry was, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? And you could understand what Jesus went through. First of all, you have friends. And in fact, this is what a, lo a number of people are going through. Because, you know, uh, most of the people are in hospitals, in isolation, and there's no one to take care of them. And basically, they are alone, and they feel abandoned. Mm -hmm. okay? But then you have also Jesus, whose friends had abandoned him. Mm -hmm. Everything seems to have you know, gone the other way. And ultimately, what does he do? He turned to his father and says, Father, why have you forsaken me? But in fact, God did not forsake his son. He was very much present, you know, with whatever was happening there. And for me, the sign that God was very present, immediately when Jesus died, something happened in, at the temple in Jerusalem. Mm. The curtain was torn into two, top to bottom, irrepressible, meaning that through Christ, through Jesus, we also have to pass through you know that, mm -hmm. to reach out to the Father. And for, for me, that was a sign, sure sign that the Father never abandoned mm -hmm. his son. But then when we also, we go to the uh, Gospel of, uh, of Luke. Very interesting, okay? You don't have Jesus who is praying, why have you forsaken me? But Jesus who is praying, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit, mm -hmm. okay? Why was that? Because the understanding of the community of, uh, of Luke was the fact that Jesus was constant in connection with his father. And if you read the Gospel of Luke, you will always find Jesus at prayer. So he's always in communion with the Father. So basically what I'm, what I'm uh, uh, leading to is the fact that if you are in constant communion with God, then what is death? It is just nothing but a recommendation mm -hmm. and a placing yourself into God's hands. Into your hands I commend my spirit. And for me, that's how I kind of look at death. Basically, we have to look at life in order to look at death. And death should not be, you know, we should not be held at ransom mm. by death, you know. I like that. I <laughs> yes. mean, you, you've, you've told us, you know, what the scripture talks about death. You've also told us what actually happens uh, after death. Mm -hmm. Now, Father, how does one live a full life here on earth? Yeah. One of the things that I, I liked about uh, Father Chilinda, I mean, I stayed with, I was a young, I was a deacon, and as a young priest, we began together. You know, he was already uh, ordained uh, maybe five, four, uh, you know, five years, you know, uh, earlier when I first lived with him at, uh, and, uh, at St. Ignatius. And uh, very grateful in the sense that uh, you know, we, we are all schooled in the school of Father Jokini, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I deeply, you know, appreciate what, you know, Father Jokini kind of uh, uh, taught us. And basically, his approach was, you know, when somebody comes to you, let them go away better than they came. Mm. And for me, that's one of the things that I learned. I don't have to send somebody away worse than they came. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and uh, one, of the th one of the passages of scripture that Father Chilinda liked, and I'm sure you, you interacting with him, you must have uh, learned that, was uh, uh, Matthew chapter 25. Mm -hmm. Yes, the last judgment, where Jesus says, as long as you did this to the little, you know, to, to the least of my brothers, or as long as you did not do this to the least of my brother or sister, you did this to me, or you do not do this to me. And for me, that is the, the, the test, I think, for our life, that uh, we should be able to, you know, Christ is ever present in our midst. We mm. should be able to reach out to others in so many ways that God has gifted us, you know. Uh, reaching out to others is in fact, and for a, that's an expression of love. Mm. Love is something that goes out, it is, you know, it overabounds, it reaches out to others. It's never self-centered, you know, it's always looking up to. So a fully lived life is a life that, you know, somebody is able to, uh, uh, to reach out to others, 
not so much concerned. You know, when, when, when people, usually people talk about, you know, yes, we have to take care of ourselves, but not selfishly, okay? Because love, you know, uh, the John chapter, chapter uh, uh, 15, I think verse 13, where Jesus says, you know, there's no greater love than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends, okay? Love is not something that you know diminishes when you reach out to others. In fact, it grows. Okay, so the fullness of life is shown in how lovingly caring we are to those who who are my my neighbors, those who are close to me. Okay, those who are, whom I meet onto the streets, because the world most of the time it closes into self. You know, self-centered. Oh, I'm all I'm concerned is me and me alone. You know the. Mm. The, that kind of philosophy, mm. you know. But Jesus is always reaching out to, reaching out to others. Okay, and then the the passage you know, that also came to, uh, to mind as, <laughs> as we are waiting here is Luke chapter uh, thirteen, verse ten to seventeen. Uh, Jesus goes into the synagogue, and he realizes that there's this woman, who is bent double, which means which means that actually this woman could not see, you know, mm. basically. Her life was, was, a, was a misery, bent over for 18 years. And so Jesus reaches out to this woman. He says, woman, you are healed of your, of your disease. And then the synagogue official got angry with Jesus. And he tells the people, you know, he says, there are six days in a week. Why don't you come on one of those days to come and be healed? Mm. But then Jesus says, you know, you're a hypocrite, you know. Um, she is a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had held in you know, captivity for 18 years. She deserves to be, to have wow. the fullness of life, yes. Father Mwelo, thank mm. you so much for coming to the program sure. and uh, sharing with us on mm. the issues surrounding death. Yes. So there you have it. I was talking to Father Mwelo. I'm sure you've learned something around death and how to live a full life while here on earth. Mwangala, are you scared of death? Now that he has explained it the way he has, I am not afraid of death. Really? In fact, Father Chinda was ready for his death. And okay. that's one of the lessons that I've actually learned from him. Mm -hmm. That, you know, in life you must be ready for anything, mm -hmm. especially as a Christian. Knowing very well that death is not the end of life, but mm -hmm. it's just the beginning of another another journey. Exactly. You know, there's actually a member, that, um, a member saying that goes like, Infatu and Danayu, like it's just right behind us. Exactly. So I think there's no need to be scared of death because at the end of the day, that is everybody's final destination, Mwangala. Mm. All right. So mm. can you just tell us um, next, what is coming next we on are now, the program? We now join Elena Piri, one of mm. our news reporters at Loyola Television. Now, Elena brings the story of Father Chilinda's love for pets. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. this instance, we are talking about dogs. dogs. Elena? The late Father Charles Chilinda was not only man's best friend, he loved pets too, dogs to be precise. In this brief interview, Chola Sakala gives us an account of how much Father Chilinda loved his dogs. Chilinda <laughs> Kuita <laughs> You'd almost say his sunshine did not come from the skies, but from the love in his dog's eyes. This could be seen by how his face beamed each time he talked about them or whenever he introduced someone to them. He loved his dogs to the core. 
All right, that was uh, Elena Piri giving us an insight. Like earlier on, we mentioned to say that Jelinda really loved his dogs. And uh, I think we even joked about some of the names that he used to call yes. his dogs. We joked about COVID, COVID. you know. Yeah. <laughs> As you if know, COVID is a good word. Can you imagine? <laughs> and the dogs did respond to mm -hmm. that name. Mm -hmm. And do you remember that every time at 17 hours, the dogs mm -hmm. would start barking? They would start barking. And he would mm -hmm. actually be up and running in our office and say, can you guys actually work fast? Because when these dogs start barking at 17, you won't be able to work. Yeah. So kindly of do your work fast, fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, that is actually one of the beautiful memories that we can actually remember and continue remembering, you know, all the time when we uh, come across Father Chilinda's name in our, in our lives, Mwangala. Mm, mm -hmm. True. Now, there are so many people that Father Chilinda worked with in the field. Father Chilinda recently traveled, you know, the whole country for mm -hmm. over 15 days where they were doing a documentary for the Industrial Development Corporation. Namakao Mukelabai uh, from the Industrial Development Corporation was with Father Chilinda. And let's, let's now watch this clip. So there you have it. That was a beautiful clip. And of course, we can actually tell that Namakao was really enjoying, you know, Father's company when we talk about the trip that they had, even when they were filming that documentary. All right. So let me not talk much. Namakao is actually in the studio with us and she will tell us more, you know, concerning the relationship that she had with Father Chilinda. Namakao, welcome to the program. Thank you. How are you feeling? Uh, you know, it's like... Um it's like this dream that you want to wake up mm -hmm. and, and it's just not going away. It's just like a really, really bad dream. Uh, the other day I was uh, talking to someone. I'm saying like, Father really pulled a fast one for, you know, on all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think first, before we even get into the interview, I just wanted to convey my deepest condolences to the family here at Loyola Studios, mm -hmm. uh, to the Jesuit family, uh, to the St. Ignatius family, um, to his family in Chulubi Island. And just everybody whose lives that uh, Father Chilinda died uh, uh, touched. All right, all right. So um, we can tell from uh, from the clip that you've just played. Uh, we just love to find out how long was that trip with Father Chilinda, and obviously, um, what exactly were you filming for uh, for the documentary? So um, that trip, honestly, I didn't expect it to go viral. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just us goofing around. That trip was 17 days. We actually used to laugh. We spent uh, 17 days on the road together in car in a pick in a car, and um, we we always used to joke and said we had I think something like 12. We spent 12 nights in different lodges. We covered more than 3,000 kilometers. Um, so what we were filming is I work for the Industrial Development Corporation. I had uh, communication. So we wanted to document um, all the projects that the IDC is involved in. So Father Chilinda's company, which is uh, Loyola Studios, so they won the tender to actually document. So we planned the trip and initially it was supposed to be in, in um, so with the way I designed the itinerary, it was supposed to be in short batches. So there was the Northern Circuit one, then uh, we needed to do Northwestern. So Northern Circuit meant uh, Lusaka, uh, then we get into Mpika, Kawam Mpika Mpulungu, uh, Kawambua, Munushi, and then back to Lusaka. 
then the next one was supposed to be Northwestern Province and Copper Belt. And uh, Father Chinese just said, no, 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 no. Why should we be going back to Lusaka, back and forth? Let's just go. So I was worried. You know what I mean? This is Father Chilinda. You know, I said, shouldn't we be going back to Lusaka? He said, no. So I said, Father, do you know that we're going to be on the road for 17 days? And then when we get back to Lusaka, we have another three days or four days to Mongo because we've got a project in Mongo. And then I said, when we come back, we have to go to Katete. So? Niche problem, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <T -N -E. laughs> so, and that was yeah. T -N -E. so we said, okay, and that's how we set off. And um, so, uh, the, in relation to that video, um, so that day uh, we were, I think we were, we were past Kawambo or something, and uh, it was the anniversary of you know being in the, in the priesthood and all that. And by that time, I think you can see the barriers and everything else had been broken. You know, I mean, I could freely actually whip out my wig and go around uh, in the car as soon as I get into the car. Of course, he laughed. Um, so that day we were just goofing around. And I thought it was a special moment to document. You know, it was 20, 20 years of being a priest and actually 35, not 30, 35 years of being with the Jesuit family. And uh, he was he was so upbeat because prior to that, we had actually been to the school where he went to when uh, during his secondary days. And so, you know, like... Um, everybody else has been penning tributes and all that. And I've been sitting and thinking, like, was that a farewell? You know, because that was not on the plan. And he could have just said, look, I'm with the client. Because as far as, as much as I know Father Chilinda, and probably we'll talk about how long I've known him, as much as I know Father Chilinda, he was still, I was still a client, you know. And at one point I tried to bully him into submission. Uh, he was still, I was still a client. He would have just simply said, okay, we can't. But he said, ah, wait, let's, let's turn. I, 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 I want to see the school. I want to show you guys the school that I went to. And there were some priests there. And of course we diverted and we, we took uh, videos of uh, another falls. Okay, I have so much to say about that <laughs> trip. So, yeah. Now looking at the 17 days that you spent with Father Chilinda, how was your experience? Um, it's, it's very mixed mm -hmm. because um, I have alluded to when we started from Lusaka Father Chilinda was my client I mean I was his client and I've known Father Chilinda since 1993 when he was an intern at ZNBC when I used mm -hmm. to work there that's how far back I've known him. And then, uh, you know, through the years, you know, you say, okay, you know, he's there, he's with the Jesuits, then he came to St. Ignatius, and then through my other um, misfortunes and all that, you know, he was there. Uh, but then, <coughs> on, from profession professionally, it's, this was the first time that we're really interacting. Every time we've interacted with Father Chilinda, it's been, I'm a parishioner, okay? So obviously you have your boundaries, this is your, your parish priest and all. But when we got, when we, that 17 days, the barriers, you know, he became a friend. Mm -hmm. He became very close to an extent where, like I said, when we started, as soon as I get into the car, I'll still hold on to my wig and I'll put a cap on. And he just said, it's full any fear, you know? So mm. <laughs> um, I was comfortable enough to yeah. actually move around without my wig. Mm. Uh, I was comfortable enough to say, ish, father, we've been driving forever. Can we stop uh, somewhere? somewhere. Uh, you know? <laughs> and uh, without really feeling uh, yeah. inhibited. And um, we would eat together. And uh, you know, father loved to cook. So wherever we would go, we would be given, like, we would pay, uh, pay a courtesy call on the chiefs. And uh, so I would be like, Father, how do we take the, the chicken? You know, we're still traveling. We're not going. He says, say, Ndafye, just mm. get it. You know, because the chief, because being delegation leader, mm. <clears throat> uh, then the chiefs would give me chicken or something. And he would whisper, say, Ndafye. So now I would get the chicken. And then the next town where we've gone to, somehow he would find somebody to cook that chicken or he himself, he'd say, let's go into the kitchen, you know, because we'd cook. all stay together. And, um, you know, he was just so simple. Mm -hmm. At one point, I think it was in Kapiri, we were hungry again. And, uh, you know, we got uh, groundnuts and all. And he was okay to share the groundnuts with us. I know this is Father Chilinda, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Even when we went to the hotels or the, not hotels, I mean the, the lodges where we, we, we didn't find the nuns, because most of the time somebody would accommodate. But then uh, when we went into the lodges, he would always make sure that we got the best rooms, you know, and you'd mm -hmm. expect him to be the one to get the best room, but he would always, you know, want us to have the best rooms. And um, one profound moment, I think, for me was we were having breakfast in, uh, in Kasama, uh, in Kawambo, I remember having breakfast, and we didn't talk about broadcasting. We didn't talk about film. He now started talking to me as, I don't know, I would probably say a big brother because I have a son. I have a daughter and a son. 
and he started talking to me about raising my son. Because, you know, in the car, obviously, we all got to know how many children we have, Chris mm -hmm. and I, and Charles, the other the driver is called Charles. And, uh, and he started telling me about raising a man. He says, you know, raise your son like a man. The way you're raising him in Macau, I mean, he's, he's not a girl, you know? So he was strict with me, he was giving me pointers. And, um, but then, you know, to wrap it up, that experience for me, I think it's something that I'll never forget. Um, I remember Chris fell sick at one point, mm -hmm. um, and father, and I keep emphasizing the entire father, because this is somebody that we, we glorified, you know what I mean? We mm. held in high esteem, all of us. Um, the entire father went to the kitchen at Zampam, got this huge pot, put herbs and everything else, and eucalyptus, and went and, you know, for Kutila, uh, uh, him. And, him. Yeah. And, and, and for me, when I saw that, I was like, wow. I would have expected him to say, Ahana Macau, um, go and, you know, go and do that. And even when we went to Kitwe, after we'd come back from Winilonga, uh, he went and stayed with uh, some priests, Fanda Bonali, in Riverside. And one priest was not well. Uh, and I think he had isolated or something. It wasn't COVID, but he had just isolated. Father Chinna just dropped everything he was doing, started cooking, and I was knackered. And I just said, you know what, I just want a comfortable bed hot bath. So father, I'm checking myself into Lunte. I will come and see you guys later. So I went and he just called me later and he says, Iwe, come and cook. You know? <laughs> so that's how I you know, sent the driver. I went, but then I found he had already started. Mm -hmm. you know, so we cooked together in the kitchen with Chris and the other child, our driver. And that's how we cooked for the other priest that was not well. You know, and I'm like, he should be tired like everybody else. But mm -hmm. uh, he, he had that big heart, you know, to look after others. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm sure, you know, the memories can actually go on and on. Yeah. The great time that you actually spent together. Mm. Beautiful memories actually coming mm. out. But um, I also want to find out something. Looking at the trip that you had, and of course you guys were actually working on a documentary. Mm -hmm. Is the documentary ready to air? The documentaries are almost ready. Um, we did quite a lot. There's a lot of footage. Um, there's one, there are two big interviews that we're yet to do. Um, and I'm just uh, thankful and uh, grateful to Loyola Studios and also uh, Father Chilinda's foresight uh, because he wasn't selfish. He carried, uh, you know, uh, Chris along. So Chris will be able to continue with, uh, with the documentaries, with the editing. I would say... Uh, more than 60% of the shooting has already been done because we needed to go outside Lusaka. That's where most of the projects of the IDC are. Mm -hmm. And there's only one that we haven't done outside, which is in Katete. Mm -hmm. But that can be done on a, like a two day, uh, two, three day trip. And the rest was supposed to be just interviews with the groups, with CEOs of uh, our subsidiaries. So we should start airing, um, this is January. We should start airing, I think, second or third week of uh, uh, February. We've already been given space. Uh, we've negotiated space with one of the teams TV stations. Uh, we're hoping one day even Loyola can actually take the, the production so that you can see, you know, the quality and, and the work, first of all, the projects that are out there that are uplifting people's lives, mm -hmm. the job creation that's happening, the manufacturing, and also the value addition to uh, um, some of the uh, raw materials that are available out there in the outskirts. And really what um, economic enhancement is, is, is happening in, in, in all these rural areas. And talking about um, recording, um, you know, Father was always the last one to get into the car. And he'll be shooting and shooting, and you'll be saying, Father, it's enough. We've got enough. No, just one more. Nala misanga. misanga. You know, I'll find you guys. Just, just get into the car. I'll find you guys. And uh, we're like, Father, we're done. We're really, really done. No, 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 no. I, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll find you guys. And I remember when we were editing, those same pictures, mm -hmm. those images, you know, that um, we'll, the last, very last ones, mm -hmm. are the very ones we'll be like, oh, I think we should include this. I think we should include that. Yeah. yeah that okay. Nice. Um, now, maybe, sorry, yeah. Mangara, to cut you short. I just want to find out. You've mentioned that 60% uh, of the work has been done. Mm -hmm. So that means 40% hasn't been done. So how do you think you're going to execute your work diligently, knowing that Father Chilinda is not around? Um, because I think Father Chilinda had a good team with him. Um, what is remaining really is just editing of these other projects, uh, there's a, um, the other, uh, the footage, which we've, we've almost, uh, we're done. And um, I'm, we are very personally, we, we are very comfortable okay. that it's going to be, the reason is we've got Chris who knew what needed to be done. You've got people like um, Lewis who, who, you know, who are gurus when it comes to uh, documentaries. You've got, um, I've got Jeff, 
you know. Um, I mean, Loyal, look, you, you've got the team, so we know that it will be done. Uh, what is remaining is just the interviews, the one-on-one -on -one with the CEO. It's like a CEO coming in here, and then we're, we're talking. The rest is me coming into the studio, and then I introduce the program. We finish, we edit, we take. But really, you guys, uh, you've got you've you've got you've got the best, and we we we're very comfortable. And um, I think in his honour. Mm -hmm you all have to get your acts together mm -hmm. and ensure that the project is finished oh, yes. in his honor. Mm. But I know that you will. And um, as somebody who was with him and the passion and the love that he had for Loyola Studios, um, my prayer is that uh, all of you here actually embrace this challenge and make sure that Loyola Studios succeeds. Great. Yeah. Now, I know you got to know Father Chilinda at close range, not because of the trips, but because he was also your parish priest. How would you love people to remember him? A man who loved everybody. I could uh, give context to this statement by um, the experience we had in Kasama. We were outside ShopRite and uh, a fellow who was like, not really normal, I, uh, maybe lack of a better term, kind of like mad. And he's just coming like, you know, he, he like, you know, and all of us were like, ah, okay, we don't have, you know, how you, ah, we don't have, we don't have. And the person wasn't even interested in us. He just went straight to Father Chilinda, held Father Chilinda, and then he says, and gave whatever we had bought, the bananas and oranges, gave him and gave this person a little bit of, I think it was uh, two quarters or something like that. And the person walked away very happy. And every time we'd see, um, you know, people like that, he'd always say, um, Father just had so much love. And I think, you know, when you give out, you receive what you give out to people. Yeah. And the way your posture is, is the way people are going to receive you. Mm -hmm. So all of us were kind of like rigid. But then you, I think his, his body language and everything, that person was able to see. Mm -hmm. Father loved everybody. Wow. Manga. Wow, that's so touching. That's yes. so, so touching. All right. Thank you so much for sharing with us, you know, um, the kind of life that you shared with uh, Father Chilinda. Mwangala. We continue giving our viewers mm -hmm. some of Father Chilinda's favorite songs, and here is one of them. But now we are joined in the studio by Dr. Buletin Samukila. And uh, of course, uh, Dr. Samukila is well remembered as the former director of then Central Statistics Office, now called the Zambia Statistics Agency. He has also served as Lopla Province Permanent Secretary, Energy Permanent Secretary, and Eastern Province Permanent Secretary among many other portfolios. And of course, um, he is here in the studio because he was a good friend to Father Charles Chilinda. And of course, uh, they were in the same class. So he is actually in the studio and of course, will be, um, he will be shedding more light on what kind of a relationship he had with uh, Father Charles Chilinda. Dr. Samugila, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank Happy you. New Year, by the way. Happy New Year. All right, so we just want to find out how did you come to know Father Charles Chilinda? Yeah, well, um, you know, uh, I went to Bahati Seminary, mm -hmm. St. Charles Luanga Seminary, which mm -hmm. is in Mansa, and there was only Form 1, 2, and 3, so we didn't have Form 4. Mm -hmm. And then Form 4, we had to go to Lubushi Seminary. That's where 
I found Father Chilinda. We were together in Form 4 and Form 5. So he was my classmate, actually, at, uh, at uh, Lubushi. You know, that's how I came to, to, to meet Charles, uh, who had started from there in Form 1. Um, very interesting person, mm. Charles was, you know. Um, and, um, you know, there was two sides to Charles. I think one of the things I remember so well, he called me not long ago. And he was reminding me of how he was chased by an expatriate teacher uh, from a geography class. You know, we were quite a naughty bunch uh, as a class. And uh, one day we were, you know, commenting, running comments as the teacher was writing on the board. And then he turned around and said, who is making noise? And then apparently Charles laughed. And then he says, it's you. What are you saying? And we thought Charles would lie to say, no, 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 this is... And he said exactly what we were commenting about him. And then he was chased from class, you know, and that was towards the exams. And he never attended those classes, revisions. Surprisingly, he passed that course. That was Charles. Wow. You know, so there was the other side of Charles, mm -hmm. but also the other side, he had a number of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. He was actually a prefect for St. Peter Dormitory. Mm -hmm. And quite a number of prominent people were actually tutored by him, you know. And uh, I still remember him and the voice, even now. He was a choir master, by the way, and probably that's how, uh, you know, he related so well with the choir at St. Ignatius. He was actually a choir master, mm. you know, and he would start, uh, That song, every Lubushi person, would remember Father Chilinda. Immediately, it just, mm. you know, sings. You're right. Mwangala, you want to come in? Oh, yes. I believe you were together at the seminary. What would you tell us, you know, about that time? Can you tell us a bit about your life at the seminary? Yeah, well, um, we were trained to become Catholic priests. Uh, but I think what is quite interesting uh, is um, where the idea came from for Charles to be a Jesuit. You know, because when you went to Lubushi, you were supposed to be diocesan priest. You know, the like local priest, the local clergy, you know, not the religious side. Um, but then, you know, we were very ambitious. Uh, that time on Pima Major Seminary, where you would go from Lubushi, uh, they were only giving diplomas. But we thought, ah, come on, guys. Why should we go and get a diploma? We need a degree, you know. And uh, one time during the holidays in, in, in Kabwe, Met a Jesuit. I met a Jesuit priest, Father Gagoski, mm -hmm. from Chowa Parish, you know. and he gave me some booklets on Jesuits, so which I took with me, and I shared with Charles and Peter Chilambo. That's how we ended up at the Jesuit novitiate, you know, for the vocational weekend. And Father Peter Caro was actually the vocations director then. You know, that's how we went there, and of course, uh, I left first in terms of I went to university and. Uh, I never became a priest. Peter Chilinda, Peter Chilambo at least tried, you know, uh, but also he didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but Charles Chilinda, from there, became a Jesuit and joined the novitiate and so on. And that's how he became a priest. So the Jesuit issue mm -hmm. was we were saying, look, we would like to be the intellectuals of the church, you know, uh, because Jesuits are amongst the intellectuals of the church, as mm -hmm. you know. And that's what we wanted to be. Not just mere priests, but mm. intellectuals. And believe me, Charles was an intellectual of the church. Amazing. Mm. All right, uh, maybe, Doctor, you can also fill us in on, on what were some of the influences, you know, um, on his life as uh, Father Charles Chilinda. <laughs> well, um, influences, I think, is also from the beginning, where he came from. You know, he came from Chiluvi Island, you know, and Father Chilinda was a very good coxswine, someone who drives the boat. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't beat Father Chilinda with that. Um, I think that had a bit of uh, influence. For example, we gave him a nickname. Oh, I don't know, I'm revealing this today. Um, you know, we nicknamed that Chisupa. You know, mm. Chisupa. Apparently, there was an honorable member of parliament and minister, Honorable Chisupa, you know. Later on, we learned it was actually a relative. So coming from Chiluvi, we nicknamed him Chisupa. And actually, it was his relative, and he was a minister, mm. you know. Uh, I think it's that intellectualism and that kind of um, direct, you know. Charles was real. 
Um, I think that did. Of course, the father was a businessman, uh, the father to Charles, and um, he was one of those sport boys, by the father especially, you know, from the stories we had. Um, but also, Ch 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 you know, Chiluvi was a religious area, you know, kind of uh, district and place. And also we had also Father Vantungwa, who was also a rector, who came also, you know, from that. So, so, so the influence on um, Charles came from a number of things. But basically, it was quite practical. Okay. How would you love uh, to, for all of us, obviously not just you, how would you love Father Chilinda to be remembered? Well, two things really. As an ordinary person, Charles was a troubleshooter. You know, troubleshooter is somebody who identify a problem and be able to bring a solution to shoot that particular problem. And I think we saw it in his life. Um, he knew, you know, all the presidents. He was close to President Mwanawasa. President Mwanawasa was not Catholic. But Charles very, was very close to President Mwanawasa. He was close to President um, Banda. He was close to uh, President Sata. And he was close to President Lungo. So what kind of a person would you think of who was close to these presidents and you'll be able to tell them things as they are? And that was Charles. So as an ordinary person, that's what we would remember Charles for. Mm -hmm. As a priest, Charles preached what he did. And he did what he preached. I think that's how we can remember Charles. Mm. Now, priest. I know there's a story you wanted to share with us. Mm -hmm. Well, well, <laughs> there was a side of uh, Charles, which uh, he, he was also a bully, eh? Charles. <laughs> um, you know, uh, we have a colleague of ours, uh, Mr. Robert Tembo. He's actually a lecturer at the University of Zambia. And whenever, the, you know, we met Charles over a drink, and we were having a drink. And then I told Charles, I said, do you know the middle name of this guy? You know, typical of Eastern province people? If you check their names, the middle name is normally a funny one. Chukudiza, mm -hmm. of course I don't want to mention the other one, I might get into trouble. Mm -hmm. Chagua, <laughs> you know, middle names. Eh? Mm -hmm. But this one, his name, the middle one, is actually Chidongo. So I said, why? Why we we were in Chidongo. Then Charles said, Chidongo Dongo. Believe me, whenever he met Robert, Oi, Chidongo Dongo is here, you know. And if there's one person who's going to miss Father Chilinda, it's Robert Tembo. Because every time he met him, he will call, Oi, Chidongo Dongo, and then he will call me, even if it's at midnight. Oi, Chidongo Dongo is here, you know. So my wife would know. When I say Chidongo, that's how he's talking to Father Chilinda. So that was Charles. Beautiful. Beautiful memories indeed, Mwangala. Beautiful and, um, memories. I mean, it's like Father is here. Yeah. Exactly. I wish we knew that yeah. he had a nickname. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's super. Yes, yes. <laughs> but apparently, it was a relative. Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. later on, we learned uh, Honorable Chisupa is actually related to Charles. Mm -hmm. so, so, by the time you're actually giving him such a nickname, you mm -hmm. had no clue no. that there is a Chisupa somewhere, somewhere. No, in no, the no. Family. Honorable Chisupa was uh, an MP and minister. Mm -hmm. You know, he was an MP for Chiluvi. Mm -hmm. So for us, we just gave him a name at Chisupa. Mm -hmm. Because of the, you know. It, but later on, we learned. Did you call him Chisupa? No, no, no. I mean, we had a lot of nicknames. You okay. know, we, mm -hmm. for example, Father Munkonge, mm -hmm. nickname was Chishi, because he came from Chishi Island. Mm -hmm. You know, so the world is. Uh, that's how Chisupa came up, because I think the MP came from Chiluvi. And Charles came from Chiluvi. Oh, amazing. I think we need to wrap yeah. up, Wangala, oh, yes. with uh, the Thank doctor. Thank you very much, doctor, mm -hmm. Thank you. for sharing those insights on uh, Father Chilinda. Okay. Mm -hmm. I Thank know you. we'll miss him so much. Yeah. Thank you, you so especially, much. especially, yeah. you know, no. looking at where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. But he's with us. He's, he's not with us with all us. the time. Yeah. He's definitely with us. Yeah. So there you have it. We were talking to Dr. Semukila, who was just giving us insights on Father Chilinda. We now play you one of Father Chilinda's favorite songs. Nisha mfumu shamu mulu, wa 
That was one of the beautiful songs loved by Father Charles Chilinda and uh, some of the beautiful memories that will keep, that will actually live on. You know, it is actually a time when he used to provide lunch for all of us right here, you know, at Loyola Television as well as production. And uh, all the time would walk in with girl mates. And I think, Mangara, you're also a fan I remember, of girl mates. I mean, I used to... I mm. used to eat game meat every day. And I remember there was time I said, no, enough of game meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't know if I can, I can still say the same. Mm -hmm. Now that is normal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, so um, we continue remembering him, you know, um, just like that. Okay, so now, right about now, we need to watch something very exciting. You know, all the employees at Loyola, you know, we all had something to say about Father Chilinda, this wonderful moment. So let's watch this. And on the other side, we'll continue with the program. I worked with Father Chilinda for a number of years. I knew him as a person who loved to work. He enjoyed doing his work. So he wanted everybody around him to work. I remember there used to be times when he, he gave me some work to do. And if he sees that he have not done that work, he'll be the one to do it himself. There used to be a lot of people coming to this place asking for help. People with different needs helped them according to what they needed all the time. Another thing is mm, he balanced his life. You know, he had work to do at the office and he had work to do at the parish. So I saw in him he was busy at the office, but at the same time, he used to be busy at the parish. Because sometimes you see him rushing, saying, I'm late, I'm going for mass, people are waiting for me. That's the kind of a person he was. Hi, my name is Mwangala Chakalashi Santos, the host of Ignite with Mwangala on Loyola TV. 
Now, how do I remember Father Chilinda? I think for me, Father Chilinda was larger than life. Father Chilinda was more than my boss, more than my priest. He was my friend, my mentor. Today, I can proudly say I am Ignite with Mwangala because of Father Chilinda. He always pushed me to be the best of myself. And that's one legacy that I'll always remember and ensure that it lives on. I will make sure, Father Chilinda, that your legacy lives on. I will make sure that I'm always the best of Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. I will miss you. Rest in peace. I will always carry you in my heart. Thank you. Uh, one Sunday I was in church at St. Ignatius and then uh, Father was preaching. So he, he apparently saw me and I thought he had not. And then later on after uh, the service, the mass, he called me and said, uh, Henry, I saw you around. Are you back? I said, yeah, I'm around. Uh, I came back uh, in February. Um, I've been away. I was saving in Belgium. Uh, then he says, what are you doing? I was like, ah, I'm just at home. Nothing really. Then he said, okay. I have a TV station in uh, Kablonga, it's called Loyola, and I'd like you to come and help me out uh, to start the news. I said, okay, um, I, I, it's someone I knew, so I couldn't even hesitate. Then I came and uh, started helping. Here I am, and uh, he introduced me to this place, and he's gone. So you can imagine the situation in which I'm in. It's a situation that every day he used to walk in this office, the first thing he did was to greet me and greet everybody, ask us what we were doing, then he would go. Every morning he did that. Now you can imagine the last few days. He's not coming in here. He's not coming to greet us. He's not coming to say anything. And it's like we're waiting that one day he's going to show up. Yeah. Um, it's really difficult to describe Father Chenda in like a word in a few sentences, because there was so much about him, a lot. The man was everything to everybody. I mean, he was a people person. He loved dogs. He loved his, a lot of things. But I think I would want to bring out this aspect that I noticed that was very unique about Father Chilinda, and that was his passion for work, his passion for broadcasting, his passion for production. Now, you can take away probably other things from him, but you never take away his love for state-of-the-art equipment. And I think that we don't apologize as Loyola Studios or Loyola Productions that in terms of equipment, filming equipment, uh, whatever, the whole spectrum of broadcasting equipment, I think that we have it all, almost all, if I might say so. That is courtesy of Father Chilinda. Whenever the man took any trip to anybody, it's common to see people coming back with probably some mementos, some remembrance. But Father Chilinda, whenever he took any trip out of this country, he would always come back with something a piece of equipment of some kind. It may be the latest camera. And it was not just any kind of equipment. He would go for the top-notch equipment, latest, the best at the time. That's why we attained at Loyola Productions among the best pieces of equipment, which of course translated into the kind of work that we used to churn out in terms of quality, in terms of competitiveness, not just in the country, but world over. So that, for me, is something that is very unique about Father Chilinda, that I'll live to remember. He was a man that loved his job. He loved broadcasting. You could see him even when he's church. He would be vested in his priestly attire. But it was not uncommon to see him leaving the pulpit and comes to join us on camera operating the camera. Probably would be there in the Obi van, switching actually as vision mixer, or whatever role he would take. Hi, my name is Milika Zulu, a news reporter at Loyola. 
Well, I don't have a lot of memories with, about Father Chilinda because I just started. But the few encounters I had with him, like meeting, meeting him in the corridors, he would be smiling while he says hi. So it's just unfortunate for me, I didn't get to learn much from him. May his soul rest in peace. It was because of uh, Father Chilinda's vision that I was employed at Loyola Television. I can describe him as a, as a man of action. Yeah, he was always smiling, but of course, very tough. And I remember before casting news, he would come and tell me, if you're casting news, think of your girlfriend. <laughs> that was him. So he was a jovial person, down to earth, but very serious when it came to work. Yeah, so I remember him as uh, being a visionary person. And it's up to us now as Loyola Production and Loyola Television to keep his vision alive. How I remember Father Chilinda. Wow, very difficult. Father Chilinda was a team player. He was a go-getter and he was a now person. Very jovial. He never postponed anything. He believed in doing things now. And one thing I always, always remember is he would come to you and ask you, why are you serious? Akuchensa, smile, life is too short. And you just look at him and smile. You're passing through his office, he'll just call you. You get in his office and you'll just say, uh -huh, um, you sit there, wait for him to say something, and he'll just look at you and say, um, nana mipkira, go to meet. And I look at him, I'm like, Father, you're the director. You're not supposed to cook for us. Iwe. Without lunch. So those are the little things that I sit and say, wow, I'm really going to miss him. I'm already missing him. But one thing I know is he's right here. He's always with me. He'll always be with me. St. Charles. So some of the things that can actually um, make me remember Father Chilinda, there are so many good memories that we shared together and um, the list is endless but I'm just going to highlight two. He's a man who believed in hard work, he's a man who is always there for you and he's a man who actually made our newsroom much easier because he had contacts for every person that should mention. So I'm going to miss him in that way because um, yeah, he was always there, he was always there to give us contacts and um, he was always there to give us connections to prominent people that we felt to reach out to but he was always there for us so that's one thing i'm going to miss about him he would always encourage us to work hard in the newsroom he would always encourage us to report facts he would always encourage us to balance our news and that's one thing i learned and i would leave to you know to remember that thing about him so i'm going to miss him so much so may he still rest in eternal peace and um, yeah thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to be part of Loyola as well. Hi, my name is Elena Perry. I'm a news reporter. Well, what I'd remember about Father Chilinda is that he was a Mr. Sage as it is. He didn't have time to sugarcoat things. If someone was wrong, he would walk up front to you and just tell you what you're doing is wrong and this is how you are supposed to do it. So he was action-oriented, hardworking, and a people person, he was always there for everybody. If you had a problem, you walk up to him. In no time, he would have solved it. So that's what I remember about Father Chilinda. Mm, I feel one day we shall our father, Father Chilinda. Fingi. And we go to our father, Kutali. Mom, 2005, we will serve Kana Pupa, Chile, to Alina so Narishium to my wife, you are one, and then a Varishium to my day for her. Varishium of Unsendela, and Narishium of Vasendela. All the church to give fee, especially Kurin, Shumfidem of Win. 
because bali nja fa mufingi sana wa fala kuko nkanga masukuru yabana bandiye bali nchita sana support so na popo ba sa tushila nanga ba kunga ndabe na myandi ilo ba mfuile chililo bali tali katabasumine anti upa 22 hours zelo pa isa isa nyonzi Baba leta pati vile wasa mboko lila wansi. Haba. Chintu chimwe chatu ikata sana. Pamono lupa luandine. Pantu uko batu fumia yekutari. Kusa tusefikele wapa. Leta pare futunga lande fingi. Ishita ya kwa lesa. Takuwa bo muntu inga uinga tarika. Le sanga na sumi ni shia umuntu tete ya kani. So eje tuwa shira fembaka ya kwa le sumu ini. Na haba puishe milimu ya wa pachalo. Hae wamba kuna kumulu. Ema shuninga kwa tuwa kula ndapo. But I want to talk about my typical day with Father Chilinda around. Um, it has been fun. And sometimes I'd be upset because every time someone else does something, Father Chilinda always came to me. Why isn't this working? Or why is this here? And even if I tell him it is not me, it is this person who, who has done it, he will still want me. To correct it instead of the person who has who has done it so for me at first that used to be offensive until I got used and said it being fun so like I actually make fun of him but like even if someone else does something else for that come and blame me or you want me to do it and I think that has actually given me the the strength to wake up in the morning and put things in place whenever something is not okay. I feel like it is, he left a responsibility on me to make sure that the equipment is being taken care of nicely. And um, the other fun thing was he would call me in his office and once I get there, I'll be like, hi, yes, Father, you are calling? He won't tell me anything, no? He'll just be, uh-huh, wamona ka, wamona, wamona. And in my heart, I'm like, namuneishi, what? So I think for me, those little, little things that he used to do, I don't know if he was doing it consciously or subconsciously, uh, what made my stay here at Loyola Fan, and I would definitely miss Father Chilinda for that. Well, the biggest lesson I've learned from Father Chilinda is to be selfless. He was a selfless man. He put the needs of other people before his, and that's the biggest lesson I've learned from him. It's really hard to cope up or to get over the fact and the feeling that Father Chilinda is not here, you know. I really got used to him, his jokes, arguments. It's really hard to cope up without him here. But all in all, we just ask for God's grace that we go through all this. You know, he was like a father to me. Apart from being a priest, he was like a father. There was actually a father figure in him to me. Yes, Mangala. So having watched and obviously enjoyed some of the things that we have discussed and some of the people that actually came over to share what kind of relationships they had with Father Chilinda. Sadly, uh, Father Charles Chilinda was actually put to rest at uh, Kasisi Jesuit grounds and of course we brought you some of the highlights you know how the requiem mass proceeded and the barrier so let's watch this and we'll be back on the other side my memory
ni no mubiri wakwe muntanze sharpe kanshi na tule gusa we sumpumu imukokerere muchipote chakwe no kuisa mugusho bushiko kwa kulekeresha bachare muri loba na kuiloba omwatura okubwerera eko mwabwerera nombalesa family mwe no isuma ya kurunga ndanguru kabanenu akakugusha kwa bushiko kwa kulekeresha Kenko, a father Charles, which is Chirinda, and Mawere Lakirova, a Sakamilanga, who said, Wa for Suma, not Milambula, his Suma. Right, so, so those are some of the highlights and um, you know this is a this was a man who also helped you know when we talk about um, the the political arena this is one person who helped to resolve political conflicts and of course we cannot just run this show without mentioning that oh, aspect yes. you know mm. um, about he was Father a peacemaker you he know, was a he peacemaker. was a unifier mm -hmm. I, I remember vividly when you know he reconciled uh, let President Levi Monawasa, mm -hmm. may he so rest in peace. And, you know, he did it with so much courage. With mm -hmm. so mu he was a fearless priest. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, we come to the end of the program. Thank you so much to everybody who took time to make sure that this program was a success. The executive producer, Mr. Henry Gilazi, for the program. Thank you so much. And, of course, the woman behind the camera, Kalizia, as well as our floor manager, Mutinta. And not forgetting the guests that we had on today's program. Thank you so much for making it time to be part of the program. My name is Luisiana Lupumwe. And my name is Mwangala Santos. And it's bye for now. <laughs>